Um, I've been covering transportation issues for about four years for the Star Tribune, and, uh, and I've learned a, a number of things about how Minnesota is falling behind uh, many other regions of the state, and particularly in the Twin Cities, uh, which are falling behind uh, regions, for example, that have uh, that have greatly expanded their transit options, uh, usually through the use of a, of a general sales tax in a metropolitan area. Those areas are growing about two percent faster per year than the Twin Cities are, and we've we've been seeing. Uh, a long string lately of uh, indicators that Minnesota is not anywhere near the top that it used to be at. Uh, we have uh, we have disinvested in transportation. Congestion is growing, which uh, uh, which hurts people's families and hurts businesses because uh, goods can't get to market. People can't get to their jobs on time. This is not good. Uh, by most measures of congestion, the Twin Cities are fast approaching the top tier of of badly congested metropolitan areas in the United States. Uh, we, for example, uh, in, in only the last four years or so, have gone from the eighth fewest number of lanes per mile traveled to, uh, to fourth fewest in the country among metropolitan areas. He's talking about freeway lanes. This is just one example of the of the effects of the disinvestment we've done in transportation, where actually the uh, gasoline tax, which has been the the workhorse of, of building roads in Minnesota, has has actually declined in 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 nominal dollars, not even considering for inflation. It's much much weakened when you consider the effects of inflation over the twenty years now that we have. Had a gas tax of 20 cents a gallon. Uh, one thing I hope to do at Minnesota 2020 is uh, is educate uh, Minnesotans uh, about one thing that many of them are confused about, which is that they think the gasoline tax goes for transit or welfare or something else. It goes only for roads, and, and when people know that, they're much more inclined to uh, to support an increase in the gasoline tax. I'm excited about, uh, about uh, covering transportation policy for Minnesota 2020 because it allowed me to, con to continue some of the work I've done at the Star Tribune, uh, especially recently, uh, where I did uh, uh, one article that, that showed the history of the gasoline tax in Minnesota going back to 1924 and how it's had great public support over the years, but how right now, figuring for inflation, it has never been lower. Uh, another article I did that, that, that surprised even people in the public policy arena is that by far the largest single source of funding for roads in Minnesota now is the property tax, which is uh, among the most regressive taxes we have, uh, at least based on the ability to pay and certainly not a user fee as is the gasoline tax or the vehicle registration fees.